This is the Voice of Freedom. to the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network. The hour of the time. I'm Pooh. And I'm William Cooper. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In a lot of ways, love is on the air tonight. We're going to do a lot of things for you um, during this next hour. As I promised, I have an expert on the uh, on the line with me here. Um, gee, I've known Gary Bourgeois for I guess about uh, it's about four years now, isn't it, Gary? Are you there? I actually heard your very first ever show. I just happened to be tuning around, and that's how I discovered. And where was that? Uh, it was on a uh, it was on a network run by a gentleman who is no longer in the business. That was the Becker Satellite Network, yeah. if, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yes, yes. And and uh, if I also remember correctly, the shows were pretty terrible back then because uh, I really, uh, even, even though as a teenager I had uh, I had been a DJ on Armed Forces Radio Network in Japan, it's been so many years since I've been in front of a microphone in any capacity that I. 
I uh, really sounded pretty bad. <laughs> well, I tell you, one of these days I'm going to have to go through and dig up some of my tapes because I have a lot of those shows on tape. I found them fascinating. Well, I'm glad that you did. Uh, you know, I was really uh, amazed because uh, I really didn't think anybody was listening because I was only on satellite. That's and then, right. And then I started getting letters. And they were coming from all over the country and and in other from other countries. Yep. And uh, I was amazed at how many people uh, were listening to my broadcast on satellite, and and they had even didn't even have any way to know that it was even there. Yeah. Well, that uh, satellite that you were on actually could make it all the way to England. I've, I've talked to people who have picked it up over there. And we did get some letters from England. I, I as I said, I was absolutely astounded. Over the years, uh, I think at first you probably were wondering, you know, where's this guy coming from? But over the years, we've become friends, and, yep. and you're actually the person who, uh, who does our reruns when I can't be around. <laughs> yeah, that's me. So uh, right in front of the whole world, I want to thank you for that. Um, yep. And that's what we're here for. And you are also sort of the nuts and bolts type person of all of this radio stuff and satellite stuff and electronics things that I don't even know uh how to pronounce uh, you know all about that stuff well it's i've been a communications uh person ever since i was a kid i i fell in love with radio broadcasting probably about the age of seven and i by the time i was uh 11 i knew i wanted to be a dj and i got my first little uh, low power uh, am transmitter at the age of 12 and it just kind of grew from there well i think that's wonderful and uh uh, I think it's wonderful how you have really been quite a catalyst in helping so many people, me included, uh, get on the air and get the right equipment and contact the right people and make sure that everything is plugged in right. Well, see, this, I have a selfish reason for doing this, Bill. I like listening to this stuff. <laughs> and I, I, would, I, I would hear a program uh, sometimes on short wave and I think, gee, I, uh, that's an interesting show, but it always keeps fading out. Let's see if we can get them on satellite. Uh huh. And, of course, the uh, the stations love it because it gives them a nice, uh, clean feed uh, direct to the, to the broadcast station as well. Sure. And uh, a lot of people out there who listen on shortwave don't realize uh, how easy it is uh, to, to uh, receive a satellite broadcast and how much better that broadcast is. Oh, it's just like your FM station. I mean, it's clear. There's no fading. There's never any interference. Uh, it's just, it, it's marvelous. The whole reason I got my first satellite system was just so I could listen to the BBC. That's all I thought that I wanted. Uh -huh. And uh, as I got more and more into it and found all of the interesting stuff and some of the hidden stuff and some of the fascinating stuff, and uh, when I found out uh, that, that CNN was not the answer to news, uh, I, I guess I became totally hooked. Actually, what, what people see on the news, even on a 24-hour news broadcast uh, channel like CNN, what they're seeing is hourly repeats of the same news over and over again that they find on the other channels when they air the news. It's basically almost word for word, exactly verbatim the same. It's all sanitized. Uh, the interesting thing is there is news up there uh, that never makes, uh, makes it to uh, any of these uh, big national broadcasters. And when you have satellite systems like I do and like you do, and we see these things um, on the satellite stations and also on the KU bands, which are uh, up until recently were sort of unknown to the world, uh, it's amazing what doesn't get broadcast, especially in this country, and, and even what's more amazing probably is why it doesn't get broadcast. What are some of the things that people can find on satellite? Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, of course, uh, there there are several uh, several channels of audio devoted to the uh, kind of thing that that, that, that you hear here, uh, except uh, in FM quality. As far as, uh, as video stuff, uh, my favorite thing is to go cruising the KU band. Now, I watched uh, those feeds uh, from the uh, uh, that that operation that recently concluded uh, down south. Uh huh. Uh, and we got to see this, this, this. We got to see the interviews with the Russian soldiers. Never made any of the regular news. People don't believe when you tell them there's uh, there's all these foreign troops in our country. They they, they they tell us we're crazy. Well, we've seen it on the satellite. Uh, they also didn't hear the uh, the remarks by the uh, the officers, the commanding right. general, referring 
to the role of American and uh, Eastern Bloc Warsaw Pact troops uh, in the peacekeeping operations that will will uh, uh, make the New World Order a reality. Yeah, in fact, those are the exact words they use, New World Order. I was watching, uh, it was Operation Cooperative Nugget. That's and correct. And they had a feed on KU Band uh, up every afternoon, and uh, it was amazing the stuff that was there. And again, you never saw any of this on, on the regular TV. Uh, another case in point uh, involves uh, uh, the, the Waco tragedy and also the Oklahoma tragedy. Now, w with a satellite system, you got to see unfiltered stuff. Uh, we got to see, uh, for instance, with Waco, I got to see the, the, the actual infrared live transmission from the black helicopter that was circling day and night. That was on the KU band. It was up there 24 hours a day. Uh, apparently somebody somewhere was watching, uh, but that was never picked up. I, I'm sure that uh, the news organizations were told not to rebroadcast that. We saw, we saw all kinds of different angles mm -hmm. that never made it to CNN. Mm -hmm. uh, plus the commentary. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when, uh, when Oklahoma happened, we heard mention of a second bomb that day, and yet it never made it out to the regular national newscast. We saw the cameras up close before, as always happens in a situation like this, everybody gets moved back just out of camera range, so you mm -hmm. can't really see anything. Uh, e even with a long, shaky lens, you can't pick up the detail that they were getting. They were right there in front of the building on the street. It was total chaos. Uh, and this was all with the, when the satellite uplink trucks first got there. But, but that footage never made it to the regular broadcast news media. That's correct. And as soon as uh, we understood what was what was happening and got our satellite uh, uh, going, uh, we actually were able to see two columns of smoke, one from this small crater uh, just outside in the little left the center of the building in the front, and one from the center of the building. And uh, then we saw the uh, news feeds from Oklahoma City, and the announcer actually stated, that there were two explosions. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you if, if you tell this to people now, of course they they just they just think you're crazy. Yeah. But that's the only way, folks. Once the news becomes uh, filtered, once it it uh, comes under the control of whoever in the world controls it, uh, you don't hear the truth anymore. We were watching on uh, KU band when. Uh, when the uh, feds came in and began to clear the area and when they said that they had found uh, a second bomb and we watched the uh, bomb truck go in there with the with the the them and the uh, uh, oh what do you call it not the bomb squad but the uh, i guess the uh, demolition team or something that dis disarms bombs i used to know what you call those people when i was in the navy but i've sort of blocked it all out yeah but uh and and this you know, normally, if someone went down to their satellite dealer and said, "Hey, I want to install a dish," you know what they'll give you? If you go to a regular satellite dealer, they'll give you HBO and all the cable stuff. They won't even tell you this stuff exists. That's correct. Not only that, but uh, they will begin to quote you prices that makes you wish you'd never. Oh yeah, I, I the, the, the typical price you hear quoted for a for a satellite system is three thousand dollars, and that's what scares everybody off, and that's why this little RCA thing. Uh, this uh, totally controlled 18-inch dish that you're hearing so much about. Everybody thinks it's a satellite dish. Friends, it's not. It's cable from the sky. It's totally controlled. It's Big Brother in action. Everything comes from one satellite filter to one uplink center, uh, and it's, it is 100% sanitized. That's right, and you don't have a prayer of getting anything other than what they offer. No, that, that, that's absolutely right. And and what, what surprises people when I tell them, you know, you can get a real satellite system for less than that, uh, they're amazed because people don't know this. It's not generally known. That for less than what you would pay for that little satellite system, which gives you cable stuff, uh, you can actually get something that will bring you some decent programming into your home. The whole world, in fact. Yes, yes that's correct. Uh, I like to watch Deutsche Welle and yep. and, uh, and a lot of the other things. Back BBC, uh, three o'clock. I don't know if you're up that late. I think it would be uh, uh, midnight your time. Is BBC uh, uh, breakfast news actually? Uh -huh. Their good morning newscast. That's that's always interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of international uh, newscasts, and if, if if you speak other languages, uh, there, there's a tremendous resource there. And even if you can't speak the language. 
the pictures tell the story. There, there is right now on KU Band the, the Chinese version of, of CNN. I mean, it's not really CNN. It's their China news channel. It's, it's, it's all in, in Chinese. Uh-huh. Uh, but you can look at the pictures and you can see what they consider to be important. That's correct. Also, the Japanese uh, news, uh, Dubai has a... Uh... Oh, the Dubai. Now, that, that's interesting because they've got several programs in English, their newscast. Not only is it interesting, but uh, if you watch that Dubai channel uh, occasionally, you'll find that the Middle Eastern folk are being portrayed as something that they're absolutely not. That's correct. In fact, they are, they're very moral, um, very... Uh, well, they're just they're like anybody else, only they're extremely... Uh, I mean, you don't see any, any of the smut on their channel that you oh, see. They, they absolutely, uh, in fact... Uh, it's interesting because many of the Middle Eastern countries uh, forbid satellite dishes because of the stuff that's on the European satellites, mm -hmm. uh, especially the high-power direct satellites. And again, it's the European version of Big Brother uh, where they have these high-power direct broadcast satellites, and it, it just, it's just it's the kind of program you don't want your family to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's talk about something that most people aren't aware of. Uh, I wasn't aware of this until, you know, somebody turned, I was looking for a way to get on radio and somebody turned me on to this little dinky satellite network, which, uh, uh, which, which I really can't say anything bad about because if it hadn't been for Scott Becker, I wouldn't have got on the air. So I'm very appreciative of that and, uh, uh, I'm very thankful that he gave me that opportunity. It didn't work out and I moved on to other things, but, uh, uh, I didn't know it until I actually became a part of it, that there's a whole other world on satellite called satellite radio. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, there, there are several channels, as I, as I mentioned earlier, of uh, Patriot programming. Uh, there are stations from all over the country. Uh, plus, uh, if you can get the Canadian satellites, which come in real well here where I am in the north, uh, you, you can see, in, in fact, I was, I was watching a program tonight which uh, astounded me. It was a kid's show uh, dealing with comic books, and uh, they interviewed a guy about uh, uh, two homosexual superheroes. Uh, and there, uh, it, 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 that particular lifestyle is actively promoted in, the, in their media, even more so than here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure you'll... You, you receive that I've heard. I listen to your show every night. You've gotten calls from people in Canada who tell you that, uh, you know, they're, they're like three steps ahead. Oh, they're way ahead. They are so far into the New World Order that it's, uh, it, it is absolutely amazing that you can get arrested for just criticizing yep. a politician. Yep. Uh, you, can, you cannot put a political message on your answering machine. Yeah. There. It, it's just, it's astounding. It's, it's, it is definitely the New World Order. Uh, and if you really want to wake up, one way to do it is to tune around satellite radio and uh, satellite video. <laughs> Another good way to wake up is to listen to this uh, this uh, communist uh, geek outfit called uh, Radio for Peace International. Oh, which, those guys. <laughs> which is a, it's a communist propaganda arm of the United Nations, funded by the United Nations, and they have a they have a program called Right Radio Watch which is, is like listening to something um, from Nazi Germany um, criticizing the enemies of Der Fuhrer. <laughs> well, that, 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 that pretty much ex uh, explains it, Bill. Uh, they, in, fact, in fact, anyone with a half-open mind listening to that program knows exactly what their agenda is. That's correct. It, it's, it's like a, a Charlie Chaplin comedy or something. <laughs> it, it's not that sophisticated, though. It's more like a Harold Lloyd. Uh, yeah, well, they, uh, I remember when they first went on the air, they were broadcasting out of some shopping center someplace in Central America. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. we, we gotta watch that. Rush Limbaugh criticized, you know that, uh, when they, when they released that presidential, um, staff memo on shortwave radio? Oh, yeah. Uh, of all the criticism that the president has made of shortwave radio, in that memo, I was the only name mentioned and Rush Limbaugh, in an effort to uh, take the blame away from himself, read the memo on the air, uh -huh. and um, he said, See, folks, it's not me. It's really not me the president's talking about. It's this guy, William Cooper, who broadcast out of a homemade studio in a storefront. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes. Uh, 
casting blame is something that the, that the big boys always manage to do. They want oh. to come out squeaky clean. Hey, that was the greatest compliment that could ever be paid to huh? me. It means that I am hitting my target. I am right on the mark. I have studied these people for so many years uh, that I probably know them better than anybody, or at least as, as much as anybody possibly could uh, in this day and age. And one thing that I've discovered, if you're not a real threat to them, if they're not afraid of what you're doing, they totally ignore you. You're, you're, you're never even acknowledged as existing. When they mention shortwave radio, it means somebody is getting to them, but when they mention you by name, then that's, that's a great compliment, and uh, I, I take it that way. And when Rush Limbaugh, <laughs> the granddaddy who sits on half his brain, reads it on the air... Um, well, you know you've arrived. I know I've arrived. Not only have I arrived, but, uh, but it was sort of an acknowledgement that uh, I have outdone Rush. <laughs> well, one thing I want to mention, Bill, uh, to people who listen to the hour of the time, uh, because I go back to when you started. When you began this, you were a lone voice in the wilderness. Nobody else was doing this kind of programming. You were it. And uh, for the Johnny Come Latelys who've just, you know, gotten their shortwave radios and they hear all this alternative thought, uh, it started. It started here on this program. Well, you know, I wasn't really aware of that for a long time, but then uh, other people began to tell me that, that I did begin this. And not only that, I began to sometimes listen to some of these other broadcasts, which, by the way, some of them are doing an excellent job. Yeah. Others are, are teaching people to run around and chase their own tail until they're, they're totally ineffective and inadequate and incompetent and everything else. Uh, but I've also noticed a pattern of imitation, which is also a wonderful form of flattery. They even sometimes choose exactly the same music, which... Same music, same words. <laughs> that's, that's right. I've heard people sign off the same way you do. <laughs> well, you, you know, um, be that as it may, uh, I think what I want to get across to people tonight is that there's another world out there. And it's not just on shortwave, and it certainly isn't on AM or FM. Uh, if it were, uh, you, you, would, you, you would see a lot of things becoming right in this country already, but we keep it off of those uh, controlled media. Uh, and the way they do that is through the FCC and through ownership. If you see a radio station begin to broadcast the truth, and it's not solely owned 100% by a stubborn individual who refuses to sell, pretty soon you'll find out that it's sold and it's changed to a all sport <laughs> station or some silly nonsense like that but on satellite are so many different broadcasting um, um, people and messages and and things that you never hear anywhere else and even if you want to hear what's standard on radio and you're not in an area where you can you can get it off the satellite uh, which is another um, a good thing now, yeah, Gary, I mean, if, if, if you ever do want to hear uh, easy listening music, which is real hard to find now, everybody's gone to rock and roll or country. Uh, there's, there are several easy listening channels that just play that nice, peaceful music that sometimes we need to, uh, to relax with. There are several stations that play uh, Christian-oriented music, which is real nice, too. Is that guy still up there who used to play all the old 50s things that you never hear anywhere anymore? There, is, there, are, there are a couple of programs like that. Those are my favorite. When I just want to relax, that's what I want to listen to. Um, Gary, I'm sure you've heard, um, I know you listen to the broadcast, maybe not every night, but quite often. I'm just sure about every night. Uh, it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've, you've heard about our offer of the uh, FM uh, radio. Yes, I, th I, think, I think that is absolutely wonderful. This is something that uh, I've been talking about uh, for years, uh, Low power community radio. I think this is this is the time for it now. An alternative voice that, you know, people can hear that don't have a satellite receiver. And rather than you know listening to the the normal stuff that that's on the AM and FM bands, uh, you as a listener to this program, if if you believe in, in in what's happening, you can actually put this stuff out on the air in your local community. What we're thinking of doing is creating a network of low-power stations across the country uh, that will either rebroadcast this, this program simultaneously and others or, or create their own programming to spread the word and uh, 
either we broadcast it from shortwave or we broadcast it from uh, tapes that they purchased from us or pluck it off the satellite and we broadcast it and uh, create this network across the country um, that will be able to broadcast in areas that would never ever hear the truth in a million years without these people doing that. Well, I think uh, I, I think it's an idea whose time has come. I think that uh, most of the people that you can reach with shortwave and fax machines and internet have pretty much been reached. I mean, there are more coming in, but now it's time to filter this message down to the general population. Uh -huh. One of the good things that, uh, if, if you can call it that, I don't think anything about the Oklahoma bombing was good, but uh, something good did happen for shortwave in that all of the comments criticizing the so-called hate mongers of shortwave radio, which I haven't heard one yet. Uh, I haven't heard anybody on shortwave radio who hates anybody except maybe a couple of these people who call themselves Christians who are always... Uh, uh, spouting their superiority and, and, and talking about the uh, the inferiority of, of certain racial uh, groups. But those are very few and far between. And those aren't patriot broadcasts. Those are religious broadcasts that none of us agree with. Yeah, in, fa in fact, none of those guys are on satellite, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. But uh, the, the good thing that happened was that all of that criticism of shortwave radio literally emptied Radio Shack of shortwave radios within a week mm -hmm. all over the country. And we picked up an awful lot of people who had never listened to shortwave radio, radio before in their life. In fact, didn't even know it existed except that if they saw it in some old World War II movie where the, uh, uh, the spy in Germany was listening to the shortwave radio BBC to get his code word to start the operation or something. So we picked up a tremendous uh, uh, number of new listeners simply because of that. This whole thing of trying to blame uh, Americans, real Americans who love their country and love the principles and ideals upon which, which it was founded for this thing that happened in Oklahoma City has backfired on these people. Yeah, it's interesting how that works. Uh, I, I, I've seen that kind of thing happen before. Uh, the same thing happened uh, during uh, the Waco siege. Yes. Now the only problem there was uh, that right before uh, right before they burned Waco, they burned down the radio station. That's correct. And they burned it down right after. In fact, it was the very night, um, the the very night that I uh, gave the warning to the world that unless we stopped what was happening there, that they were going to murder all of those people in that church. And then uh, they burned down the radio station. It was, it was, and the funny thing is, it was right after your broadcast. Yes. Um, which should have told the world something. <laughs> I'm not sure if the world was really listening then, but I know that a good segment of the world is listening now. Too much has happened to uh, to to be able to ignore it anymore. Even you, you can't you can't turn back the pages anymore. Yeah, and even he is out of the bottle. Even people who have never paid any attention are beginning to pay attention now. Um, I'm going to be right back in just a second. On the day that the foaming cleanses, three pots and pans, just like a whip. Ajax cuts grease faster than any other leading cleanser. Do the pain, the elbow touch, and you start cleaning with Ajax. Ajax, you harsher than the clean. I love those old commercials. I don't know. I don't know where you come up with some of these things like that. Like a radio jingle. Some of your uh, uh, bits and uh, musical bridges are amazing. Well, thank you. Um, somebody told me once I have an eclectic taste in music, and I guess that's that's right. But because I tend to like all different kinds of music but the, the good I, I think there's good in every kind of music that there is yeah, yeah. there's and a lot of great music in fact I remember a show you did uh, on that other satellite network where you did a whole hour of nothing but musical cuts and they were all great well I can't even remember that oh I've got it here <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk about trading some tapes or yeah something yeah okay now let's get back to this uh, folks what I brought Gary uh, on tonight for, and we've sort of set the stage for what we're going to talk about in the last half of the hour here, is um, 
to uh, talk about how you can set up your own satellite earth station. Isn't that what they call it? Yep. Earth station. Uh, that's right. So, see, we got this thing up there in space, and you're down here on the earth. So you're going to set up an earth station to communicate with this thing that's up there in space, and it has a lot to offer you. Now, whether or not you ever listen to any of the satellite radio, there's a tremendous world up there uh, on video. There's a tremendous world of radio. There's a tremendous world from foreign countries. There's a tremendous world that nobody knows about except those of us who, who have... Uh, uh, sort of concentrated our system in that area, and that's KU band, which is where most of the news feeds and the feeds on satellite uh, that that people don't want you to see or hear. And even lately, they began to scramble the audio. Have you noticed that, Gary? Uh, sometimes if you tune around, you can usually get it in the clear. Uh -huh. But you do have to you do have to look for it. Uh, I've noticed some feeds that have missing audio, so I think they're they may be digitized. Yeah, but nonetheless, what we've been most interested in has been the uh, video anyway, right. because that's where uh, they hide the things that uh, they can't hide. You know, they, they just don't show it to the rest of the world in the regular news, but on KU, it's there. And before it's been sanitized, so to speak, you get a chance to tape it, and uh, uh, in fact, that's where Linda Thompson got all of her stuff that she put in Waco the Big Lie. Everybody is very critical of Linda, but without Linda, uh, there would never have been Waco hearings. Nobody would have given a damn about those people down there. Even as hard as I tried with my broadcast from Waco, I didn't even have one one millionth the effect that uh, the big Waco, the big lie, Linda's uh, videotape had. Yep. And uh, it really doesn't make any difference whether there were flames coming out of the barrel of that tank or not. Um, uh, what what you saw in Waco, the big lie, uh, with even without the planes, was enough to wake the nation up. Uh, and like what we saw on satellite, I was absolutely glued. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gary, what do we? Uh, what does everybody need? Well, you need a, a dish, and we call them buds, uh, which means big ugly dish, and that's opposed to that what we call the little silly dish, which is the one you don't want. Dish will give you every bit the same performance that they used to get out of the 12 and even 16 footers uh, 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And a 7 foot dish is uh, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a nice dish to work with uh, and uh, works works very well on both C and KU band. Does it have to be mounted on a pole? Yeah, you. Uh, what you do is you, uh, you pour concrete, although you don't have to. Now, I know people who just set their dishes up on, on wooden platforms so they can move them around. Uh, but usually you, you, you sink a pole in the ground where direct south is, uh, we're not talking magnetic south, but real honest to goodness map south, and once you determine that, uh, it, it's, it, this is not rocket science. Everybody thinks that, you know, setting up a satellite system, you gotta go pay the guy $3,000. I'm here to tell you, uh, that uh, I know people who had absolutely no electronic background whatsoever are sitting back right now and enjoying satellite TV. And it's not as, it's not that complicated. In oh. fact, it's not really complicated. Not at all. complicated at all. Now, just for those people out there who don't want to dig a hole and who don't want to sink a pipe in the ground to mount their their dish on, you can use a sheet of plywood. Okay. Uh, that works real well. Uh, I know people who actually roll their dish. Uh, I know a guy that's not allowed to have a dish. And now I do I do a radio program on Friday nights, which is on satellite only. And uh, there are people who listen to that program that actually one guy rolls his dish out on his balcony, uh, another guy rolls it out of his garage, and I have one guy that listens using a very small dish uh, that he puts in his pickup truck, and he has got it on battery power, and he drives up to, uh, to the top of a mountain somewhere <laughs> and listens in. So it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a really interesting technology. Not only that, but a lot of people have devoted so much time to this that it's become a good portion of their life, a hobby, oh. so to speak. Yeah, I used to think I was crazy. Well, I, I am, I know, but uh, there, are, uh, there are people who are just as, uh, as into this as can be. I have four dishes, uh, and a lot of people might think, well, why? Well, and the answer is so that when something important is happening, you don't, you're not stuck to one feed. You can actually scan around. Uh, and also for, for recording things that are taking place uh, with news, uh, we like to document stuff. But th there are people who we call ourselves dish heads, 
uh, who are really devoted to this whole concept of uh, basically freedom of information. You don't have to file out, to fill out and file papers. You just point your dish at the sky, and there it is. And uh, uh, some of these people have their own shows on satellite. Yes, yes, that's correct. That's and correct. Uh, there is a, a network that is devoted to things technical, uh, computers and satellite. And we talk a lot about the Internet, uh, which is another passion of mine. Not not nearly as into it as, as the satellite dish, but it, it's also a good way to get information. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. We get an awful lot of information from the Internet. Uh, I don't believe in the Internet as far as uh, getting on there and having conversations with people. As far as I'm concerned, that's the biggest waste of time. Well, there, because, uh, again, there are a lot of idiots there. Yeah. Uh, they, they, anybody can get on the Internet, mm -hmm. uh, whereas with satellite, it takes a little bit of savvy. In fact, uh, the Internet group that's devoted to satellite uh, has a relatively good signal-to-noise ratio. There aren't too many idiots in that group. That's right. Uh, very seldom. Some of them will come in and try to make trouble every now and then, but for the most part, it's good, solid information about satellite. Great. Now, they need a, a dish. Right. And it just so happens we have one. We've uh, put together a package for those of you out there who want to get into satellite at the lowest possible cost that you can get in at. And uh, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later. But what else do we need besides the dish? Okay, you, need a, you, you will also need... Uh, a device called a feed, which is actually, uh, it's, it's like a, a, a metal, kind of like a coffee can in a way, that, that, that concentrates the microwave energy. We're talking microwaves here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's called a feed horn. Mm -hmm. uh, inside that feed horn is a device called an LNB, or low noise block converter. That amplifies those very, very weak signals up to a level uh, that can then be transmitted by a, a piece of regular coaxial cable uh, from the dish into your house, and uh, from there it hooks to a device called a receiver, which people are listening to it on a shortwave receiver. Well, a satellite receiver is much the same thing. It's got, uh, it's got a digital readout on the front, uh, and it uh, uh, will allow you to punch in the exact frequency that you want, both audio and video. Okay, so we got a dish, we got an L&B feed. Um, now the feed and the L&B L &B are actually two different. Yeah, they're, they're two different things. Most people think of it as, as, as one thing. In fact, there's also a thing called an LNBF, which is everything manufactured as one unit. Right. Uh, uh, and I have I have one of those. They work they work fairly well. Uh huh. And then you need uh, cable. You need, yeah, you, you need a, you know, a, a run of cable sufficient to get from the dish to inside of your house. Now, what kind of cable is it? I mean, it's all different kinds of cables. Well, yeah, what, uh, what satellite uh, systems use is called RG6. Uh, it is a coaxial cable. It's a very high-grade, uh, low-loss cable, uh -huh. which, which will uh, pass the, uh, the frequencies. Now, what the LNB does is it takes these, these frequencies, which go up to 12 gigahertz, which... Uh, is a very, very, very high frequency. It's a microwave frequency. What the LNB does is it converts that frequency down to a band of frequencies from 950 to 1450 megahertz, which is still pretty high when you figure that your short wave radio quits at 30 megahertz. Uh -huh. But uh, that is something that you can send down a coaxial cable without any loss if you have a good low loss cable. Okay. And then from the, uh, the dish... The feed, the L and B, and through that cable we go to the receiver, the satellite receiver. This is the heart of the system. Uh, this is uh, the device that actually takes and uh, demodulates, uh, pulls the video out, pulls the audio out, and then in the back of this unit there are there are different jacks, uh, one for each channel. You have a left and a right channel, and that's another neat thing about uh, satellite is. Uh, when you look at the stereo on an FM radio, they got everything crammed into, in, into really into one channel, and they, through a bit of trickery, they, they, they come up with, with two. But what satellite does is they actually use a separate audio transmitter for each of the channels, left and right. So you have 100% separation, uh, and the best sound quality, it is just amazing. I mean, it, it, it will blow you away, the sound quality that comes out of these units. Yeah, it is amazing. To hear stereo uh, off a of satellite is... Uh is is truly uh, greater than uh, listening. It, it's much better than listening to stereo FM, which sounds 
until you've heard stereo off the satellite, uh, sounds really, really incredibly good. Yeah, I think that under ideal conditions, because it's an analog signal, uh, and I know there's all this, this push about digital, but uh, people who are purists will tell you that when you digitize something, you, you subtract from it. You can't sample all frequencies, so it, there, there's a little guessing game going on. This is an analog signal. Uh, it is uh, the, the sound quality to me personally, and you know everybody has a different opinion, but I think it sounds better than CD. Wow. Well, that's incredible. Um. Viva USA in your Chevrolet, America is asking you to call. Drive your Chevrolet through the USA, America's the greatest land of all. On a highway or a road along a levee, performance is sweeter, nothing can beat her. Life is completer in a Chevy. So make a taste today to see the USA and see it in your Chevrolet. Traveling east, traveling west, wherever you go, Chevy service is best. Southward or north, near place or far, there's a Chevrolet dealer for your Chevrolet car. So make a date today to see the USA and see it in your Chevrolet. Stay tuned, folks, for Uncle Milty. Coming up next. <laughs> I remember that one. Oh, yeah, me too. Um... Well, we've got a we got a dish. We got a feed L and B cable and a receiver. And uh, by the way, our receiver is already set up to uh, uh, receive both of the Patriot Audio channels on uh, Galaxy Six, which is really G two. Well, yeah, it's actually now it actually really is G six, but a lot of older receivers call it G two because they don't have a G six position. Well, I have a G six position, but I get. Uh, okay, well, see, here's what happened. Now, this is, this, is, this is why satellite can be confusing to some people, because what they did was uh, Galaxy 6, the actual satellite, the physical box in space, Galaxy 6 used to be located at 99 degrees west. In fact, that's where we saw the initial Gulf War feeds were at 99 degrees west on the brand-new Galaxy 6. Well, what, what they did was when G2 died, because the satellites get regularly replaced, uh, they moved... Galaxy 6 over to the exact same spot in the sky that Galaxy 2 used to be. So it really is Galaxy 6, but if you've already, if your receiver was programmed a couple of years ago, uh, if you press Galaxy 6, the, the, the receiver doesn't know that it's been moved, so it goes to 99 degrees west, and uh, there's nothing there. Uh, so, but if you press G2, it will go to the uh, uh, 77 degrees, which is which is where Galaxy 6 now is, which used to be Galaxy 2. It, it, this stuff can get real confusing. You can't tell the players without a scorecard, and that's yeah. one of the things that I, that I do is keep track of this stuff. Well, it, it really confused a lot of people because one night I went on the air and said, hey, folks, you can get us on satellite again. We're on Galaxy 6, channel 14, 745. Six. Galaxy 6, and the dishes immediately went to 99 degrees left because the satellite had just been moved like about three weeks before that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, depending upon if you have a, a newly installed receiver or if you like to do like I like to diddle with mine. Some people don't like that, but I, I sit and I diddle. I, I, when I find out something has changed, I go into the receiver and program it in because these uh -huh. receivers are programmable. Well, uh, a lot of people, like I said, tuned in and couldn't find it, and uh, uh, it caused us to lose some of our satellite listeners. But I think as soon as you told them it was Galaxy Two, they found it. Cause yeah, it's about I would say ninety nine percent of the people in the country uh, are listening, and they their receiver display would say Galaxy Two right now, but it actually is Galaxy Six. Hmm. Well, as long as they've got the right uh, transponder and the, and the right... Uh, yeah, it's, you know. it's, it's, it's uh, Galaxy 6, or you could just say 77 degrees west, transponder 14, and we are at 7.56 audio. Uh, there is another service uh, on the same transponder at 5.8 that also has uh, a great deal of Patriot programming as well. So uh, the neat thing about that is uh, if you have a stereo receiver, you could buy two... Uh, of, of these FM transmitters and actually feed uh, two channels of Patriot programming to your community off of the one satellite receiver. That's the really neat thing about this. Yeah, that really is neat, and uh, it, it you can really do that. Um, wow. 
and the receiver the receiver comes program. The distributor has already programmed these channels because programming is uh, it's a lot of work, and some people don't want to do it, and it can be confusing when you just start out. The nice thing about this is uh, you hook up the dish, you, you, you point it at the satellite, and uh, it comes with aiming instructions. You run the cable into the house, you, and you put the receiver on zero one. He's got it set up so that so that channel one, because it's a programmable receiver, so you can put any channel on any number. So channel one is is this satellite uh, transponder that we're on now. So you just go to one, and there you are. You just take the feed out of the back, uh, both the left and right. Uh, in this case, the feed is in mono, but you get it on both channels. Uh -huh. Now, also, this system that we have, uh, which I'm going to uh, outline to everybody here in, in just a minute, um, it can be upgraded. It's yes, and that's the beauty of this. Uh, again, a lot of people get scared when they uh, when they hear that three thousand dollar price tag. Even upgrading this system fully is going to come to nowhere near that. Uh, but you can start off simple, and it's, it's kind of like a computer this way. This is the uh, the distributor has put this together so that when you first get the system, it's a one satellite only system. It only gets Galaxy Six. Uh, now, you can go out and use what we call the Armstrong rotator and actually physically move the dish to get the other satellites, and a lot of people do that. But you can also add a motor to it and a positioning controller, which will then enable you to sweep the entire sky. Uh, and there's about 50 satellites up there. Each, mm -hmm. each of those 50 satellites has up to, uh, if it's a CNKU band satellite, you're looking at uh, more than 50 channels, 52 channels of programming. So that's an awful lot. And then, and then the radio, in addition to that, each one of those channels can have up to 10 radio stations on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the first thing that happened to me, it was like culture shock. I get a satellite receiver. I thought I would never get a handle on it because there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things. And it changes every day. Now, our system doesn't have the decoder. No. And uh, I'll tell you what. I've got four systems. I don't have a decoder. I will never own a decoder because the decoder only brings you one thing. It brings you Big Brother programming. It brings you cable programming. You don't need the decoder. All of this, the, the good stuff, the enjoyable, the interesting, and the entertaining stuff is free. That's right. And the if you have the decoder, then you have to pay somebody to watch what it is that they've encoded and encrypted and in, are in broadcasting on satellite. That and costs the, you money. the real insult to that, Bill, is that uh, you pay to watch commercials. 99% <laughs> of those channels that you pay for have commercials in them. And they're getting longer and longer. You know Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean to tell you, you know, there are some channels that, that uh, you know, like the science fiction channel, uh, before they, uh, they they finally did scramble it. And, and so, you know that anything that's designed for cable will eventually be scrambled mm -hmm. uh, because that's the way they want it. They, they, they tease you into seeing it for free and then hope that you'll, you'll pay to subscribe to it. But... It, it's actually unviewable because there's so many commercials. And the interesting thing is there are so many non-commercial channels that are up there that never show a commercial that, uh, that are also free to watch. That's right. Now, both of these uh, Patriot uh, radio programming uh, satellite channels are on that, that our system is pre-programmed for on Galaxy 6, which some of you will receive as G2. Right. So if you can't get it on G6, then go to G2. Go to G2 and there you'll find it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. And I'm going to finish up the rest of this broadcast live because the system that we offered back then, and I don't really know when this was, but it was a long time ago. Uh, let me see. Oh, this was uh, September the 5th, 19... 95. This was a completely different system that we had offered at that time. We have a system that we are offering now, which is even better and less expensive than the system that we were offering back in uh, 1995 in September. And uh, the reason we're doing this, folks, is is certainly not to make any money because you don't sell. You don't sell uh, tons of satellite systems uh, to anybody for any reason. Uh, and I don't really don't know why, because you should be able to. Uh, but because we believe in this network, we know that this is the only way that we can ever achieve a true freedom of the press, a truly people-owned media across this country. 
if you uh, really looked at the corporate ownership of all of the radio stations and television stations and networks in this country, you'll find that there's five major corporations that own literally every one of them, except for a few small mom-and-pop stations scattered across the country. And uh, the news, the programming, everything is tightly controlled, and, and it is promoting a political agenda. There is no freedom of the press in this country anymore, ladies and gentlemen. It does not exist, except for those who own the press. So, we're going to make it possible for you to own the press, your own piece of the media. We have a satellite system with a seven-foot dish. It is the top of the line. It's an Orbitron dish, which is the very best that you can get. We have the L&B and the, uh, all of the stuff, KU and C-Band, and uh, the uh, top of the line receiver, 100 feet of coax cable, Everything you need to set up your own dish. We even give you complete construction instructions. We won't give you constructions. We'll give you, we'll give you complete instructions. And uh, we'll even tell you how to align your dish and uh, what coordinates uh, you, you pointed at for where you're at. And uh, everything. We'll even give you a phone number to call if you have any problems so that, uh, so that we can help you get it set up. And uh, we guarantee it. For the first 30 days, we guarantee it. I mean, if during the first 30 days after you receive your system, uh, something won't work no matter what. You call us and we help you. We do everything in the possible world possible and, and it just won't work. You send it directly back to us, whatever part of it is that doesn't work, and, and we'll, we'll exchange it for you for a brand new one. Just like that. After that first 30 days, then the manufacturer's warranty kicks in and you've still got a year's warranty from the original manufacturer which are uh, you know excellent warranties and uh, so it, this is top of the line stuff and there's no sense in telling you the names of all the stuff because if you don't have satellite systems and you never studied or anything uh, you're not going to know what I'm talking about anyway so just Believe me, folks, it's top-of-the-line equipment. We have uh, we made a deal with the manufacturer, the providers of this stuff, uh, to get it at really inexpensive prices. Now, if you think that I'm joking with you, uh, then you can go down to your local satellite dealer, tell him what you're getting, and ask him how much he can give you the same equipment for. And uh, you're going to find out that uh, <laughs> you're going to come running back to us. You're going to come running back to us so fast uh, that nobody will even know you were gone. And, and uh, it, the price varies by just a few dollars depending on whether you live east or west of the Rocky Mountains, and that's because of shipping. If you live east of the Rocky Mountains, if you live east of the Continental Divide, ladies and gentlemen, the price is $530 delivered to your door. That includes shipping and everything. Shipping a seven-foot dish and all the equipment and the whole works right to your door, $530. And if you live west of the Rocky Mountains, it's $545. So west of the Rocky Mountains, it's $540, excuse me, $545. West of the Rocky Mountains, west of the Continental Divide, $545. East of the Rocky Mountains, $530. And uh, we only make $10 handling on all of this. And uh, we should make more, but we're not going to simply because we want you to get a satellite system. After you get your satellite system and get it set up, we want you to get a low-power FM transmitter and start broadcasting the truth to the people in your city, your town, your neighborhood, your rural area, wherever it is that you live. And uh, we don't care if you make up your own shows or whether you carry our programming or you carry somebody else's programming, as long as you have freedom of the press to broadcast what you want and what your people there need to hear. That's what we care about. We are sick to death of the communist news networks and the liars and the manipulators and the porno and the violence and all of the crap that that we're being bombarded with on the, on the establishment controlled uh, media and uh, so we're giving media back to the people just just as simple as that and everything that we're doing is 100 percent legal and lawful and nobody can touch you with a 10-foot pole so there <laughs> put that in your pipe and smoke it so, if you would like to purchase your satellite system to get started, 
If you live east of the Rocky Mountains, make out a check or money order for $530. If you live west of the Rocky Mountains, make out a check or money order for $545. And if you live right on the line and you can't tell which side you're on, take a, a pitcher of water outside and pour it on the ground. If it flows to the east, you're on the east side. If it flows to the west, you're on the west side. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, Send us a check or money order for $530 if you're on the east side, $545 if you're on the west side. Make it out to Harvest Trust, H-A-R-V-E-S-T, or just Harvest if you want to. Make your check or money order payable to Harvest or Harvest Trust and send it to the Harvest Trust, P.O. Box 1970, that's P.O. Box 1970, Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, 85925. That's the Harvest Trust, P.O. Box 1970. Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, 85925. Okay, folks, you got it. Now all you got to do is do something now. Get your satellite dish. Get it set up. Play with it a little bit. And then get a low-power FM transmitter and start broadcasting. It's important, ladies and gentlemen. There are so many Americans out there who are spinning around thinking that these, these creeps and liars are telling them the truth. And it just isn't so. And I think most of you already feel that in your gut already and uh, would like to do something about it. So here's your chance. I've done it. I'm broadcasting here in, uh, to two small towns in the east-central section of Arizona. One of our affiliate stations recently made the Arbitron ratings, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, they, the, the people in that area enjoyed this programming so much that they just turned off all the other stations and started listening to our affiliate. And, uh, of course, when they did the Arbitron ratings, they do it selectively by calling uh, people in the area and asking them questions about the radio programming and stations that they listen to, they made the Arbitron ratings. And for a small FM low power broadcasting station like what we have across the country, that is fantastic. And it proves that we are right, that this is the time to do it, uh, and, and that we're doing the right thing. And I think it's going to spread like wildfire. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are frustrated. Uh, <laughs> frustrated media people anyway, people who've always dreamed of having their own radio show. Well, now you can do it. Now you can do it. And, uh, you know, when we send you your order, we'll also let you know who you can call or talk to to get your low-power FM broadcasting transmitter. And uh, it's not expensive. It's $129. Another $36 for your antenna. And you're in business. You're broadcasting. So save your money. Do this. Help us take America back. All of America, not just part of it. And the airwaves is part of America, ladies and gentlemen. So I guess that's about all I can tell you. Good night. Please do this. It's important for all of us. And God bless each and every single one of you. This is the Voice of Freedom.
are listening to the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network with studios in Eager, Arizona, broadcasting on satellite GE1, the most powerful in the sky, Transponder 7, 7.56 audio, and over 700 FM stations across the nation and around the world.